Welcome back to the shop. All right, today we're diagnosing a 2015 Buick Encore for a coolant leak. Um, I've worked on this car a couple times. I've made a couple videos on it. We put a water pump on it. Uh, water pump's on the passenger side. Bailey says hello. She's wanting to play like always. It's a nice day. Okay. Um, came back um, in the second video for a misfire. Um, diagnosed some spark plugs. Actually, I didn't make a video of that. I did not make a video of the, of the skipping, uh, but I did make a video of doing a transmission service on this car. So if you know how to do a transmission service or a water pump, we've got videos, detailed videos on that. Um, this time it's going to be a little bit different part of this cooling system, but uh, another leak. Sometimes, and unfortunately, everything's made of plastic these days. So over time, plastic gets brittle, O-rings shrink, uh, get flat, they lose their roundness, and um, just stop sealing. Sometimes when we have these hot and cold swings, you get a 60-degree day uh, in the afternoon and a 25-degree night at night, and it swings back and forth like that a few times, the little O-rings can't seal anymore, and you get some drips. And that's what's going on with this guy today. Um, if you're getting coolant built up on top of your transmission over here, and you can see right down through there, well, I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's a, a bunch of antifreeze sitting on top of there. And I've watched this thing a couple times. I've cleaned it up, I've drove it. I drove it, let it sit. I drove it like three times, let it sit overnight and never got a drop back. So I gave it, gave it back to him. And a couple days later, she saw a couple drops in her driveway. I said, bring it back. I, I know what it is. I just, I should have went ahead and replaced this, but I didn't because uh, they're notorious. These Ecotech motors are notorious for this little water outlet uh, leaking on these things. And, and, uh, give me that stick. Anyway, um, basically where this one's leaking is right out of the sensor. So it's dripping out of here, drip, drip, drip. Just a little annoyance um, every once in a while when the pressure gets uh, to the right temperature and, and uh, whatnot, it's uh, allowing it to drip out. Sometimes it doesn't, I mean, I saw it for two days and I couldn't get it to drip. So we're gonna replace this bad boy because they're only about 25 bucks. Um, some of them are a little more, just depending on what brand. This one's a Dorman. You can get an AC Delco, they're all about the same. Um, as you can see, you got this one comes loaded with a sensor, um, some sort of a restrictor, it looks like, right there. And we got a couple water hoses we're gonna have to disconnect. We got some inverted torques, is what I call them. Um, so you use sockets like this. These happen to be snap-on, but you can probably get them in any brand, I would imagine. A pair of radiator hose pliers. I always like to have a handy pick for getting hoses off or undoing these quick clips. These clips like this. If you need to pop those off, you can do them pretty good with these. Um, this is a Matco hook tool, whatever you want to call it. Giant pick. Of course, you got to have a ratchet. Probably going to need some extensions. So we're going to dig in here and we're going to uh, get these hoses off. We're going to pop this thing out of here. Get the new one installed. And hopefully that'll take care of this uh, lady's issues on <laughs> our coolant system. What are you doing? Rascal. You are a rascal. Give me that stick. Give me that stick. Give me that stick. Give me that stick. Go, Bailey. Go, Bailey. She got ran over once doing that. I think she's learned her lesson. She doesn't go out on the road much anymore. Um, we're going to build a fence one day. No. That's right. <laughs> work the clips loose. And hopefully none of this crap breaks.
Whoa. <laughs> She's under pressure. Volcano. Well, I was going to drain the fluid out, but then I decided not to because I just did a water pump on it like two weeks ago. And I was like, uh, it's got brand new coolant in it. You can see what that coolant looks like. It's neon. Um, the coolant that I put in is pink, orangish Dex cool for GM. Uh, the shop that diagnosed this thing for the water pump, they must have put a gallon of freaking dye in this cooling system because I had the water pump off, I drained the radiator, flushed it out, and I'm still getting coolant. Orange coolant getting dyed green. You see, see what it looks like. It's neon. It's, I don't, I've never seen anybody put, I'll be honest with you, I've never put dye in a cooling system. I've put it in oil before when I'm having trouble finding oil leaks but you bear, you just put a little bit in. You don't put a, I don't know what they put in that thing, man. Um, and it was an obvious water leak, so it was unnecessary to put dye in it in the first place. And then they told them <laughs> that they needed a specialty tool to get the drive belt off, and they had to order the tool because if they didn't, it would cut their fingers off trying to take the belt off. Well, you can go back in the video, me doing the water pump, and clearly see you didn't, you didn't need anything like that. All you needed was a long-handled ratchet and an inverted 14, I think. Um, anyway, I'm going to have to let this thing settle down. I've got a bucket under it. Uh, we're doing it outside just because I didn't want it to drain all over the line of racks. I figured that was going to happen. And it's easier for me to catch the fluid. And I don't need to raise it up to do this job. So we're going to let that thing drain out a minute, and then we'll pop the hoses off. There she flows. I, mean, I knew I was going to lose some antifreeze. I was just trying not to drain the radiator again. What a mess we're going to have to clean up here. Here we go. Man, the sun is so bright, I can't even see what I'm doing. It's too bright. Okay. It may be in my best interest to go ahead and take this clamp loose and get this um, charge pipe out of the way. Uh, just so I can get to that back clamp easier and I can get to those torques so I can get to This clamp on this one and I can get these back bolts a little easier <clears throat> So I think we'll work on doing that All that drips in that I know it's hard to see because the sun's blowing us out here, but if you can see that, I got the charge pipe out of the way. I just pulled it up here. I'm going to pop this clamp off. And we've got a connector right here we need to unplug. And a dog that likes to bark. What's your name? Tony. <laughs> All right, so uh, got my sensor unplugged, got my hose off, got a 10 E invert. There's more sunshine than I can handle. And a dog that won't stop barking. Yep. Crack them all loose by hand with a ratchet and I'll just run them out by hand with the extension. Pop it 
it loose and pull her out of there. Let that stuff drain out. If you need to know a part number, the Dorman part number I'm using is a 902-846 water outlet. That is the most common cause for a water leak if you're getting it on the driver's side. Now, if it's on the passenger side, more than likely it's a thermostat or the water pump. More than likely a water pump. Bailey says yes. Here's the factory. So it was leaking out of that sensor right there. You can't tell now because there's 20 gallons of dye all over everything. Um, it's a temp sensor. And it's like a cylinder head temp sensor probably. But all these things have is this one water, one water uh, O-ring that seals up against the head. That O-ring's flat. If you go back to that water pump video, I did the thermostat housing because it had a flat O-ring, but I didn't replace the thermostat of the housing. <laughs> I hope that wasn't a mistake. Uh, but I didn't see any issues with it other than the gasket, so I changed the O-ring gasket, whatever you want to call it. We're going to do the whole housing on this because uh, it's only 25 bucks and comes with a sensor that's leaking. We'll get this thing cleaned up, stick it back together. If you like this kind of content or if this was helpful for uh, any kind of learning, I appreciate it if you give me the thumbs up, give me a subscription, hit that subscribe button, it's free. Hit the bell notification if you wanna see any of my videos drop as soon as they're released and uh, check out the channel. We've got all kinds of stuff. If you're into hot rods or drag racing, that's on there. We're Matter of fact, we're about to leave for a trip, for a five-day trip. Well, it's actually a seven-day trip in Florida called Sick Week, where there's about five to 600 crazy hot rodders driving anywhere from a regular old everyday hot rod to a 5,000 horsepower Pro Mod on about an 800-mile trip through Florida and up into Georgia. And we start in Bradenton, and we go up to... Orlando, then we go to Gainesville, then we go to Valdosta, and then we go to Ocala, the Don Garlic's Drag Race Museum, and then back to Bradenton. And all the cars have to be driven. They cannot be trailered. They can pull a five by eight trailer, that's as big as they can pull with their tools, race tires, fuel, and stuff like that. Spare parts, uh, can't, can't be any assistance from anybody, at the track at least, uh, except for their co-pilot. And on the road, you can stop and help people. Somebody's broke down on the road, but um, yeah, pretty wild event. We're looking forward to it. This is the first annual Tom Bailey's hosting, uh, putting this deal on with um, many other people helping, but this is going to be an awesome event. We're leaving for that in a few days. We're going to button this thing up, get this thing cleaned up, and get this lady back on the road. I had to put back together. It goes back together fairly quick. It's not that big of a job. Um, if you're trying to do this at home, you can totally do it. If you are doing it at home, you just need a few specialty tools, which aren't really that special. You can get them at any auto parts store, most likely. Uh, the inverted torch bits to get the bolts out and uh, a good pair of radiator hose clamps. Don't try to do it with needle nose or channel locks or something. You're gonna break something, mash a finger, it's even frustrating with the uh, good flyers, but it's even worse when you're trying to fight them with the wrong tool. So go ahead and do yourself a favor, get the right tools, um, and you'll have them in your arsenal for next time. All right, we're going to clean this thing up and wrap this video up. I appreciate you watching along. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Tell me what you think. We appreciate you. See you in the next one. Peace.